Okay, check out this project. You are this pug on the right here, and you can walk around this church. And when I walk over to this person, they see me, they walk over, and they play this piece of text, and then they try to fight me. And we can see this famous Pokemon Classic transition. So this is a Pokemon Classic clone in Godot, and not the whole game or anything, just kind of the basic systems. And then you can see here she talks, she takes out her Pokemon, and then we can, you know, we can change our Pokemon, we can choose our attack or whatever, um, and then they attack back. And if we look behind the scenes, we're gonna select Crybaby, that's the person we just fought, and we can see that she's entirely resource driven. So look on the right here, it's all resources. So when we saw her, she played this text. When the battle begun, she played this text. So there's no code here. And if you don't know what a resource is, I have a video explaining what a resource is and why they're cool and useful. Um, but if we go to her Pokemon, you can see again, she has a wizard hat. The wizard hat has a level HP, uh, max HP, yada. I just took all this from the Pokemon Wiki. But what I mean to say here is that for this game jam that I did, um, I kind of accidentally wrote a very neat and cute Pokemon engine. So I thought it'd be a good idea just to release that and talk people through the basics of adding new stuff. I'm not going to go line by line about how I wrote it. That's just a waste of everybody's time. And you know, if, if, you're, a, if you're a game dev, right, you, you don't care how it's put together. You just saw this and be like, oh, cool. I could put my friends into this game. I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go. We're going to first see how to add a new move. So a move is like, you know, Thunderbolt or electric attack, or whatever, right? So go to the file system and we can see in moves, we have a bunch of moves and we have a folder for electric and fire and stuff. I'm just kind of organizing things pretty loosely here, but let's say we go to electric and we go to the Thunderbolt attack. So Thunderbolt attack is just a resource and we can see that it has a name, it has a power, it has accuracy, it has a type, and then it has effects, which is just going to be a pack scene of some effects that are going to play. So this is it. So you can see here, it's just a little crappy sprite of a spinning cannonball or something. I don't know what this was. It, was. it was from the game jam acid pack. Yeah, and, and that's it. And so we're going to make a new move, new electric move. It's going to be called Thunderbolt. Oh, what were they called again? How about Thunder, Thunder Power? So I select that. We're going to rename it here to Thunder Power. We're going to give it more power and more accuracy, make it an electric type. And we'll reuse this uh, graphic. So that's how you would add a move. But how would you make a Pokemon use that? Well, let's go down to our Pokemon. So again, there's just a directory here called Pokemon. And we'll go for Wizard Hat. He's the electric type. And we go to his resource. And you can see here his name is Wizard Hat. He has a level. This is like the base level. And then when he gets used in the game, you know, you duplicate that and then you mutate these stats. But in his moves array, remember that this is just like a script, right? So you can see here we have all the export variables. He has an export variable for moves. And he has one move so far called Thunderbolt. So we're just going to add a new thing to, it, to this array here. And we're going to drag in uh, Thunderbolt. A thunder power. So now he has two moves. So now if, if I were to play the game, uh, I would see that he has two moves. Let's test that. We're going to go into the battle scene and you can see here, this is the battle scene that shows up. And again, all resource driven. So if I go to me, the player, I can choose player here. I come down to my Pokemon. Right now, I just have one Pokemon. His name is Horns, but I'm going to add a new Pokemon. Um, it's going to be a uh, Wizard Hat. I want to add Wizard Hat to my Pokemon. So now if I run this scene, I can go to my hats. I can choose Wizard Hat. And I go to Wizard Hat. Now he has Thunder Power. So that's how you add a new move to a Pokemon. Next up, how would you add a new Pokemon? Well, more or less the same deal. So let's go to Wizard Hat here. And you can see that every Pokemon is made of, you know, the resource I just showed you. And then he has a battle graphic. So a battle graphic is just a very simple scene where you have to have a front and back sprite. So this is just, you know, if he's your Pokemon, this is what we show. If it's their Pokemon, this is what we show. And then a sound effect for faint um, and for entering. Let's duplicate this guy. We're going to call him uh, Cup. We're going to go to his battle graphic. We're going to rename this to the cup battle graphic. So now we're opening that up and we are going to then change uh, this sprite here to be a cup. Actually, no, what am I doing? No, this is a tutorial, right? I have to use the Godot icon for everything. Cup is actually going to be the Godot monster. So, and then for the back, I guess we use this guy, but uh, slightly like that. And then here we're going to rename this to the cup battle graphic, even though it's the Godot monster or the Godot robot, I don't know. Now we have this new Pokemon. We want to create his resource. So he's going to be called Cup. And if we go into here, we can call him uh, Cup. And then here for battle graphic, we drag on our new battle graphic we just made. And then we can see here he has a level, HP, max HP, all this kind of stuff. And then he has moves, which we saw before. And then he also has moves to learn. So moves to learn is then a dictionary of number, so the level, to a new move. 
So if we want them to, let's say, learn Thunderbolt at level one, so we create a new int and at level, oh, at level two, let's say. And then the new value is going to be a move. How about he learns this move here called chair, where he chose a chair. So like, he doesn't seem to want to do that. Right, you have to say object and then drag it on. Okay, super easy to do. So now he's going to learn chair at level two, and you don't have to write any code for that. It's just part of the battle system. It'll just pop up after the victory that he learned it, and then that'll get added to his list of known moves. So that's how you would add a new Pokemon. Let's use him. So now we're back in our test battle. We're going to delete both of our Pokemon, um, and then instead use cup, and then let's delete these sprites here because we don't need them. So my only Pokemon is going to be cup. So now when I run this scene, I skip through it and go cup, right? And then he has the same moves as the wizard hat. But then if he gets to level two, um, which maybe I could do as part of this, let's see. Will you change Pokemon? No. Oh, I think he's gonna die. Yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, but he, he would have learned that other move if he had reached level two, okay? Um, and so that's how you add Pokemon and moves and you let them level up at certain times. So next up, we'll add a trainer. So come down to the directory here called trainer and let's go for the, let's say the rude man, right? The rude man is a directory here. We have some sprites for like his different, you know, animations and stuff like that. And then importantly, we have his resource. So rude man trez, text resource. And then you'll have a name, rude man. That's what shows up when you talk to him and stuff. Then he has an array of Pokemon. And then here you can see he has one Pokemon, spiky. And then he has this world encounter, battle begin, battle lose. So this is stuff that gets played as you talk to him. So world encounters, when you first see him, the engine will just play this. So I heard what you said to that poor lady, yada, yada, yada. You can add a text or you can add this special script that's called game. Then it'll run that script instead. And then that game has some like handy variables like to, you know, say, you know, get me the player node, get me the level node, get me the info box, which is the little pop-up that, you know, shows text and stuff. And then Rude Man has a battle graphic which is just like the Pokemon one. And it's the same thing where there's the protocol of a front and a back and then an enter where he plays some sound. Um, so if we want to make a new character, again, we're going to make a, the Godot guy a character. We'll just duplicate this directory. We'll call it Godot man. Delete all these sprites. We don't need them. We will call this Godot man text res. And then he has this script here for when he loses, but we don't want to do that. We're just going to use the text. And then he has some stuff for a battle graphic. So we're going to rename this. We don't have to rename it, but it's just good to make sense. So Godot man. Now we have his resource. So we're going to use the Godot man battle graphic. We're going to change his name to Godot man. We're going to leave his Pokemon the way it is. And then for his world encounter, he's going to say, I am Godot man. Godot for is all mine. That's the world encounter. And then the battle begin. Um, let's just say he's going to say the same thing. So now if we go to the battle and we go to the enemy resource, instead of fighting against dead man, we're going to fight against Godot man. And you can see I'm Godot man, Godot 4 is all mine. And then you can see we didn't change his graphics. Um, so we'll do that now. We'll give him this uh, beautiful face. Let's go back to the battle and run it again. And there we go. So that's how you would add a new trainer. Now, to encounter that trainer in the world, what you want to do is go to the, the world node. You can see here that they all look like the crybaby. It's just because I did make it a tool script, but we would go to um, here, let's say the crybaby. You would duplicate this, and then we're going to change this for the, the Godot man. So we're going to call him here in the node tree, Godot man. And then you can see in trainer, Godot man, we're going to grab the Godot man res, pull it on. And, and we're missing one thing, which is you can see here, he has a battle graphic. But trainers also have a world graphic. And right now he's going to use the world man graphic. So what we want to do is find an example of that. So let's go to rude man. And we're going to duplicate world man's world graphic. So we're going to call this Godot man world graphic. And we're going to put it in the right directory. And you can see here that it has this little kind of sprite that I did. So instead we're just going to put on the Godot guy. Now if we go back to our world and we play this. Um, oh, it didn't work. Oh, because I never dragged it on. Okay, so I never set it in the resource. So Godot Man World Graphic is now part of the Godot Man uh, resource. So now when I run it, there we go. And when I see him, he's going to say, hey, I am Godot Man. Godot 4 is all mine. That's because that's the world encounter text. So that is how you would add a trainer. And the very last thing is that you can see that if I walk over here and I look up at these chairs, it plays this little text. Look, you look at the front row of seats, 
we think about sitting. So how does that work? If we go to the node tree here, we can see that that was just a collision shape with some text attached. that have the same text we saw. So let's duplicate that. And we're going to have a new one here. And instead, we're going to say, you know, you walked on a box. And then each new line becomes a new line in the info box. So new line, new line. Now when I run it, you can see you walked on a box, new line, new line. And that's more or less high level explanation of all the systems. That is enough for anybody that has the motivation to start hacking away and copy pasting their way to making a whole full game. I think it'd be really awesome if somebody did something bigger with this. Um, I don't have the time, but that would be really, really cool. Um, so yeah, good luck to anybody that tries to do that. Have fun trying to read my code. And let's finish off by just running through the game. So, okay, so let's actually just play the game. Why not? So we're the pug and we're gonna go talk to this lady. So she says, oh look, aren't you a cute pug with a hat on on your little head? Look at me talking to a pug. You don't understand anything I say, do you? What? Amazing, you can speak English. Who taught you to talk? Was it my son? This is his funeral, sadly. Oh, you say you didn't know him, but you thought, you thought he was a what? Hey, don't say hurtful things about my son. So now we're gonna fight him. So, hey, you can't talk to people like that. You want to fight me, but I'm just an old woman. Crybaby wants to fight. So Crybaby sent that wizard hat. Oh, that's not full screen it. Um, oh, I'm still the Godot monster. I don't know if I could beat the game with just the Godot guy, but I'll try. So let's use Thunder Power. Okay, so Emmy Wizard Hat fainted. Cup gain, nine experience. And there's a bug because I didn't do the level up thing properly. So Crybaby is defeated. Uh, she says she's very sad. And she goes, no, don't steal my wizard hat. It's all I have left of my son. Please, please don't steal my wizard hat. And you take the wizard hat. So now we have that wizard hat in our inventory and we can like, well, here one thing we can do is when we try to run away, there's one of those little events and it says, hey, you think about leaving, but feel like it's the life of the party. You have a responsibility to stay. Um, we can also look at these chairs here, and it says you look at the front row of seats, you think about sitting, but remember, front row is for nerds. So then let's keep going. Now the priest tries to uh, get in our way, so he says, hey, I heard what you said to that poor lady at her own son's funeral, and I think you should leave. So now we're gonna fight him. So please just leave, you've upset everyone. Rootman wants to fight. So Rootman sends out Spiky Hat, so. I'm gonna send that cup and get thunder power. So cup fainted, so now I'm gonna use the wizard hat. I stole off the old lady. So okay, this guy's actually really strong. I think I'm gonna lose. Let's see. Okay, so you're at a Pokemon, you lose. So the priest says, "Are you happy?" We're all crying even more now. So I can go up to the dead guy, and it says, uh, "You want to fight the dead man, but he is dead." So he's saddled with chewing his femur. You let your Hadamon try some dead men also. And hey, all Hadamon HP restored. So you notice there's a piano to your south and you've always wanted to learn. But I'm gonna go north and then it says uh, you move north, ignoring the hint that said to move south. Nobody tells you what to do. And then we can go look at these paintings. So you look at the painting, you see that there's a sad man with nails in his hands and you think he must be a very bad carpenter and that the brushwork of the painting is just naive. Uh, so let's go back down to the piano. We're gonna learn piano. So you climb on it and you say, oh, and you start to play chopsticks badly. But then the dead guy wakes up. So you talk to God, him and God agreed you're terrible and brought it back to life so that uh, you could fight. So on my grave, it'll say, died saving 100 orphans from a burning building and kicked a bug's ass. So the annoying dead man wants to fight. So he's gonna send that crown. And I'm gonna send that cup again. I have full HP because uh, we took a little bite of him and restored HP. His enemy crown, he's burn, blah, blah, blah. So drill this. And go cup. So now I'm fighting against beer. He uses chair attack. So my cup fainted, I'll send a wizard hat. And I'll just use send the bowl, okay. So, gained 3 XP, defeat the dead man, and he said, God is going to be so upset with me. Yeah, probably. 
So then he asked me to please just leave. So we'll go to the exit of the church. When I get to the exit, so you leave the church and you're very annoyed that nobody pets you. And that's the end of the game. Yeah, so that's it. So please fork this project, hack around with it, and like post whatever you get up to in the comments. I'd love to see what people do. Okay, thanks guys, bye.